Boris Johnson has delighted the nation. Under his latest rules, no one has to spend Christmas with me. Hello, I'm Alistair McIntosh, Chief Executive of the Housing Quality Network, and this is the last edition of First Things First for 2020. Just to add a seasonal touch to this, I dispatched our outside broadcast unit down to the empty Bank of England to reshoot our version of the epic Muppets classic, A Christmas Carol. It's Christmas, and this is the place where Scrooge mistreated Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim. Will this year be better for them? Let's find out. So what does the future hold for social housing this year? Let's find out. Oh my God, what's that? Ah! Uh, Ha, ha, I am the ghost of housing's future. Hmm, I wonder if the rules on lockdown apply to ghosts. Can I enter these premises for a pint of funny ale? Let's find out. <laughs> Apparently not. Bah! Well, that didn't go to plan, did it? But fortunately, I've got the key messages from our correspondents on this letter smuggled out of the high security Pentonville prison. What did our ace reporter have to say? Well, the point he makes is that in the end, Scrooge listened. And that maybe gives some lessons for us in housing. At the moment, the funders are looked after excellently by the regulator for social housing. If you take a farthing out of the till, they will be on to you. Thank goodness for that. Developing homes, the builders are looked after by Homes England. Brilliant. We need many more homes. But who is speaking up for the residents? It is true that TPAS and TARO do a fine job, but they're somewhat undergunned by other lobbies. The regulator for social housing has asked an excellent question. How do you strike the correct balance between building new homes and fixing the ones you already have? Back in the 1980s in Liverpool, the Trotsky leader of Liverpool City Council, Derek Hatton, was heavily criticised for building new homes next to ones that were tumbling down. Have we actually moved on from that? Hmm, I wonder. And how do we fix that? How do we introduce an effective resident voice? Well, to some degree, it's already there. The shared owners, they're younger, they're savvy, they're incredibly well connected and they're cutting through some of the largest housing associations in this country like a master chef carving the Christmas turkey. But we need more than that. What about all the other residents that have no voice? How can we help them to be heard? Perhaps the new inspectorate could potentially have the answer. Now nine times out of ten when the inspectors go into a local authority or a housing association and they find fault, the fault will be due to lack of investment in the properties or the management systems. So I'd like to see the inspectors have the power to funnel resources to landlords that need the money and can spend it effectively, just like they used to do. And in arriving at their decisions on a landlord, they've got to look and see if the resident voice has actually been heard, whether it's been given expert advice. And that's difficult because experts disagree, as we see on a daily basis. And we had Matthew Taylor at an event last week from the RSA, spoke very well. One of his many fine points was that in lots of situations, there is no single right answer. People will take different entrenched opinions. And the job is to bring people together, not fan the flames of fury. Now, in housing, very often you will find some residents that are opposed to regeneration 
Who wants to live in a building site for years? Certainly not any of us that depend on Zoom. So there does need to be a process of bringing together the interests of the existing residents and getting their stock brought up to good standard and getting folk out of temporary accommodation, which of course in this day and age is shameful. So that's tough stuff. It's difficult. So I'd like to see the inspectors assessing landlords on how well they bring together the separate voices, how they blend them, how they arrive at sensible conclusions, and ultimately how well the inspectors share good practice across the country to improve how we resolve thorny issues like that. And in the last segment, I'd like to look at Brexit with the benefit of our correspondent on the high seas. Hello, I'm on the high seas and I'd just like to say there's nothing at all to fear from Brexit. We will have our fish, everything will be fine, it will be dandy. 2021 will be the best year ever. <laughs> 